Good afternoon. Uh, I'm with Boeing. Uh, I work with Paul Davies as well, uh, who you may have seen speak earlier. Thanks for taking a break from the amazing demo and stuff that's going on out there. I'm going to take a few minutes of your time and show you some of the stuff that we've been doing, uh, leveraging virtual tours as a communication platform, uh, interacting uh, data set with it. And woo, it works. So uh, I lead a team of really uh, technical photographers. Uh, we've been solving problems uh, using photography at Boeing for almost 50 years, uh, capturing images of uh, test work, manufacturing, quality, and engineering. Uh, in the last 10 years, uh, we've started pivoting a little bit and adding in some, uh, some new skill sets to our team, uh, creating Apex Virtual Tours. Uh, these are interactive images, still photography-based, uh, that are integrating with existing processes and tools at Boeing, uh, providing a much more enhanced uh, tool uh, for many, many processes and systems. I'm going to go give you a couple examples of those uh, and how that works. This is cool with all these windows. Uh, so we have, uh, so we're making an interactive platform uh, providing real-world views where you can create, edit, and export your data to uh, real-world views of the environment. So if you think of a uh, virtual tour of, an, uh, of a house, it's a very similar platform. Uh, it's just that we're using very highly accurate uh, camera systems, uh, providing massive amounts of resolution and information uh, through each phase of the build on uh, many different programs at Boeing. So this is kind of a fun chart to explain how we're merging the data together. Uh, so we're taking some, uh, some current data sets. So you've, you think of textual data. Somebody goes onto the airplane, records a, a data set and record about a job that needs to be completed or something that's in work. Uh, they create a record of that data and information. And then we're taking a virtual tour platform and integrating that data into it. And what happens is the teams around Boeing who use this tool uh, go on and reference the the data set that's uh, online in the Apex virtual tours, uh, and they reference uh, where it is on the plane to what the data says about it. So you have a current data set uh, that's editable and uh, relatable, and it makes it a personal, personal experience and ownership for each team that utilizes it. Uh, so they go in and actually uh, update the information and the current status, and they're able to use that same, uh, it's live on the web uh, inside Boeing, so they can use that same data set and link to work and collaborate with teams on sites around Boeing and not just uh, specific to that specific site or person. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick intro to each of these. Uh, I have four examples here. These are the first two. I actually showed these last year uh, at AWE, uh, but in case you didn't see it, I'm going to give you a quick recap. Uh, the one on the left here is a uh, side-by-side -side comparison of a 3D model and a photographic virtual tour. So what you're looking at is the wheel well of a 737. Uh, you have a 3D model of showing all the parts and pieces that are available and modeled uh, versus the real-world view uh, that lets you see what the current condition is. Uh, you can actually navigate and pan through that, uh, through that view, and it'll match that viewpoint uh, to the 3D model. The bottom one is an example of an interactive virtual tour showing all the work packages to be completed in that phase of the build. So when the airplane moves into that assembly position, you have all these highlighted areas where the work is going to be completed. And as you walk through the tour, you can, uh, you can zoom in and clearly see all the bolt patterns, all the fasteners, and all the systems that go into that installation in that phase of the build. You can also search through uh, the virtual tour to find uh, information that you're looking for just by putting in the job number and search. And oops, I broke it. <laughs> so what I was going to show you is a, oh, there we go, fantastic, thank you. Uh, next slide, there we go, and if we can play this video. This is the, um, this is the video example of the 3D model, the virtual tour. Uh, this is a massive model of visualization tool that Boeing uses internally uh, compared to the uh, photographic virtual tour. So all these little spots uh, 
are showing and referencing a three-point location where we placed the camera, uh, and then as I move through the tour, it updates that viewpoint. It's a really powerful tool for comparing the, uh, the as-delivered or current configuration of the aircraft uh, and compared to post-modifications or as-designed configurations. Uh, it's a very, uh, we've used it on quite a few different scenarios where airplanes have been changed or modified post-delivery, uh, and we've, we've flown over and taken some uh, 360 tours of those uh, and then referenced the designed configuration. Those are helpful for making updates or changes to the internal hardware and uh, configurations of the airplanes and fuselages after delivery. All right. Uh, this, is a, this is another video, if you can play this one. Thank you. Uh, so this is your interactive IP map. This is a 747 in the structures build phase. Uh, so you have all these, these highlighted parts uh, that are representative of different systems, posts, fasteners, stiffeners, uh, and frame splices. So you can say we've got lots of resolution. Uh, the, we spent a lot of time making sure that all of the stitches and uh, photography is uh, exactly right. We're led, by, we got a great team of uh, technical photographers that have been doing this for a decade, and we we've got quite a library of images that we use to uh, to pull from as we build these these systems. Perfect. Gonna let me go. Perfect. Uh, so these are the next two examples I was going to show you. We've got uh, these are kind of our latest and greatest innovations that we've been rolling out and have been in, uh, affecting 14 different programs currently. Uh, we've got uh, this top one on the on the left, your right, uh, is showing the uh, the web tools innovation. So we have uh, the data set I mentioned earlier, where you have. Uh, current data that gets applied uh, to a specific finding or job that's in the air aircraft. Uh, and then as teams meet every morning and they have their morning meeting, the shift shows up and you say, here's, uh, here's our current work statement that we need to focus on. Uh, they pull up and go through each one, make sure who's assigned each job. Uh, and then they can go through and uh, assign the line numbers or specific units of airplanes that are being worked uh, and common to that, uh, that installation. The lower one is an example of a, um, of a data set that we use, uh, that we can pull from and then plot automatically on the aircraft to show uh, where, uh, where on the aircraft that data is common to. Uh, we can use that with photography or uh, 3D models. Uh, in this case, we didn't have a uh, photog photograph available, so we used a model. Uh, but it's a, a nice, quick visualization tool for uh, plotting uh, large amounts of data. All right, this one's a video as well. I was very excited this time because I got to show videos and last time I didn't. Uh, so I've grayed out a lot of the data and the information, but uh, you can kind of see how this system works. As you, uh, as you move through the, through the tour, uh, you can kind of see you've got um, various stages of configuration. Uh, this one happens to be a 787. And then I can click on a data set over on the right uh, and click look to, and it's going to or more information, it's gonna show me more details about that job. Uh, but then it's going to uh, send me over to, uh, to where that location is on the plane. So it's a, it's a pretty neat tool that uh, lets users uh, find where, the, where on the aircraft their information is. Yes, they have three point locations, but visually seeing that information uh, in front of you, understanding the systems and the uh, assemblies that are around you uh, during that installation, it can be very important. Uh, in this case, you may not have access to go back there and work on that because there's these other large assemblies around you, large tanks. So you've got, uh, a lot of times they'll, they'll find out that they need to change the order of operations to make an assembly process a little easier. Uh, it's been a very powerful platform for them to leverage and making manufacturing even easier. Oops, I broke it again. One thing I did want to really mention up here uh, while we're getting this back up is uh, that the reason this has been so successful for us, we've been building this up more and more every year for the last 10 years, is we've, um, 
we spend a lot of time understanding our customers' use cases. Thank you. Uh, and really delving in to understand the why of what they want. So a lot of times the customers, will, uh, internal Boeing customers will come to us and say, hey, uh, we have this problem. Uh, can you take a picture for us and give us, give us a tool to, uh, to make this new process work for us? Uh, and a lot of times what we need, uh, if we go out and build that for them and just give that to them what they asked for, it doesn't really solve their need. Uh, so kind of <laughs> what we were talking about this morning with Pixar, in that uh, we really need to understand uh, what, their, what their need is versus their want. Uh, and that's really driven to some exciting, powerful tools that have uh, made some real differences for us. I've, I don't know how I'm doing on time, but you want to play this one real quick? Thanks. Uh, this is a uh, 747 wing, uh, mid build. I'm uh, just going to show you a quick visualization data set uh, in terms of how you can plot large amounts of data to understand where it is common to the plane. So we're selecting several line numbers, uh, and you can see the icons show up. Uh, and based on where you move to and which icons you select, you can get information common to that, uh, that data set. Okay. I don't want to break it again, so can we do next slide? <laughs> Thank you, perfect. Uh, so in 2013, we started uh, building virtual tour for a 777. Uh, we actually built a tour of every, every single day of the manufacturing process, all the way from uh, the final assembly day one through uh, their delivery as it rolled out the factory door. It was a very big, complex, um, huge process for us, and it took us uh, actually over a year to complete. Uh, which is kind of where our chart at the top up there shows a large number of hours to complete it. Uh, but as we started adding up and learning from, uh, learning from the new capabilities uh, and adding in more programs, uh, we've taken it down to delivering a new tour uh, actually every week. Uh, so we're delivering new tours every week um, for much less time and uh, uh, delivering a 357% process improvement for our own team. Um, and then of course our volumes have gone up as we've had a lot more programs to support. So it's been a pretty successful product for us, uh, delivering some really exciting benefits to uh, lean out processes and uh, create collaboration platforms across the enterprise. Uh, in summary, um, I don't know what my time is, but in summary I just wanted to show uh, that the virtual tour platform was uh, kind of an original uh, VR concept that uh, was widely used for, uh, for home use and selling, uh, selling houses and real estate. Uh, we've kind of adopted that to, as a collaboration platform inside Boeing, uh, allowing for multiple teams to collaborate on the, uh, the actual physical build of the aircraft, uh, leveraging the entire life cycle of the aircraft uh, from engineering drawings, uh, data population during build uh, and design and all the way out through delivery of the aircraft. Um, it's impacted everything from manufacturing, uh, quality, training, uh, and visibility for uh, engineering and leadership. Any questions? Thank you, Jeremiah. Four minutes, perfect. Oh, thank you. Um, excellent. Okay, I can, I can do three. Uh, what camera do you use? We've used several over the years. Uh, we started actually with a PanoScan system, uh, but we've currently, we're currently using a uh, DSLR D850 as our current system. So depending on the, uh, the space, uh, how much resolution we need, how much room we have to shoot it, uh, the lighting configurations and the need of the final delivery, we have a variety of systems that we use. Uh, what is the client or consumers of these packages? Uh, the clients, uh, for the most part, are uh, quality uh, and manufacturing teams who need to understand the data where it's relevant to what phase of the build. Uh, it, it's used by people all over Boeing. We have thousands of daily users, uh, but it, uh, the main customers for the bulk of these projects have been uh, quality and manufacturing. Do the first tier suppliers have access to these? Uh, at this point, no. Uh, we are working on uh, licensing 
this, this technology outside of Boeing so we can complete the si supply chain all the way from, uh, from vendors and suppliers all the way through uh, final uh, customers and final delivery. So if there is if somebody here has a request, uh, we can get you in touch with the licensing team uh, and we can see if we can figure out a way to make that work. But at this point, the short answer is no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I would like to capture your question on the, for the recording. Would you like to use the microphone? Yeah, just a quick question. Um, you mentioned VR. Mm -hmm. it, it's, is it consumed via like a 2D format, though, like a computer screen? Uh, yes. We, uh, we don't use HMDs on this uh, because, uh, A, like uh, Paul Davies mentioned earlier, is the, uh, H, um, the HoloLens and many other similar HMDs are not allowed on the Boeing network. Uh, so it's probably kind of a limited, limited deployment of that at this point. So being able to make this as widely available as possible, uh, we, we use everything from tablets to smartphones to desktop computers. Uh, now, so my second question is um, the interactive uh, version I saw, so it was like a 360 photo mm -hmm. and then I saw a little pink. Ta so is that, is that recreated uh, with every build, like every new photo? Do you have to go and drop in the, the little, or do you have like a template that works with this? Good question. So that uh, comes up a lot. Uh, we, we generally use uh, a stand, uh, we capture images at a standard build. Uh, so in other words, uh, for, uh, for Delta, United, and Emirates, they all, have these, they all have different configurations when it goes out the door, but up to a certain point, they all have the same structure. They all have many similar systems. They have similar uh, parts and pieces that go into early stages of development and build. Uh, so we capture those images, and they're relative to all all line numbers, all units produced. As you get later in the build process, we do, we have started uh, capturing every single unit delivered, every airplane delivered. Uh, it's a developing technology and developing capacity, uh, but we don't do that for all, all airplanes at this point. Thank you very much, Chairman. I guess if I had uh, asked him to tell us what's coming down the road and what's in the future, <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be able to tell us. So I'm glad the questions were safe. They were very safe. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody was well behaved. <laughs> Thank you.